Hello, my name is John C. Carpenter and I am a pianist. And I'm here to tell you today about the class I have right now, Pedal 101. So this is Pedal for the beginning pedal person. Now the pedal is often be called the soul of the piano. Uh, and a lot of music is written without which, uh, without the use of which of the pedal cannot be conceived of. A lot of music was written before the pedal was ever conceived of. So we have to make those distinctions, but that's for a later video. Today, the soul of the piano, the pedal, and the basic pedal 101. <clears throat> now, I will start basically with a description of what the pedal does. Okay? There's a piece of felt that lies on top of the string. Okay? When you push the key down, it lifts that piece of felt off the string to let the string vibrate. Okay, because there's something like this that comes up and pushes it up. When you push the key, it pushes it up. This piece here goes up. And you can see it better in this diagram. This diagram here shows the mechanism. You've got the key down here at the bottom. This is the key represented here. Pushing that key down will cause that long shaft to push that piece of off up off the string on top and that part is called the head so this wire uh, pushes this head up off the string allowing the string to vibrate and when you release that it drops the uh, the head back on the string and that mutes the sound. Now if, if you are a harp player and you wanted to mute a string you touch it with your hand. So you play a harp and then you want to mute it and stop it to get another sound going. So what do you do? You cover it with your hand. But with a piano you cover it, you drop the, you drop the, uh, the damper down on it and that stops the noise <laughs> or sound, hopefully sound of high quality uh, and it stops it. Now I'll try to go into the piano and you can see <coughs> a damper in action. Uh, hopefully you can see these dampers. I will pick out a note. Let's see here. Maybe we'll try a higher one. And which one's moving us? Now nah, this one's good. This is good. Now yeah, this one here. Oh, it's so dark up in here. There you go. You see the little damper coming up off the string, allowing the string to vibrate. When I release the, the, the note, the key, after I strike, I hold it, I release it, it goes down. I strike it quick, it goes down quick. It just drops down. I mean, the hammer's already dropped. The only thing that is determined now is the length of the, of the sound, and I can control that by my finger by dropping the damper when I feel like it. Okay? So that's the dampers. Now this is one way. The other way is to use a pedal. The pedal, this is on here, I might as well do this too. The pedal opens all these dampers up. <clears throat> so like this. <clears throat> Can you see the dampers coming off the keys? And going back on. That's not a very good angle for it. I don't know that I can get a better angle. But you'll see that the hopefully that the dampers are going up or down as I push the pedal. And if I yell in there, yo, what's that? You hear an echo, yo. And I release it, all the hand, all of them drop down. So they're all picked up at once, and this allows things. This allows things to sound together, all together. So push the pedal down, and all the dampers are raised. Okay? And the reason when I yelled in there, the strings vibrated in sympathy, because I had the pedal up, it vibrated in sympathy to the sound of my voice and produced that sort of echo quality inside the piano. And that's what happens when you push the pedal down. It opens up all the strings, all of them. 
and that will be interesting for later on. Now let me show you a demonstration of how you use the pedal. Now there's the foot. Oh goodness. Okay, here we go. Yeah, can I get a good picture of the foot? This is why I have delayed putting this video together. Eh, I'm trying to get an angle here. Uh, yeah, yeah, push this lever up and down. I think you can see it just about. That brings it down. Okay. That's the operation of the pedal. I'm not using optimal foot position right now because I'm just trying to show the up and down motion of the pedal. It's the one on the far right, and I call it the damper. Well, people have different names for these pedals, but I call that one the damper. Now, what does the pedal do? Okay. Now, a lot of music has been written, oh, since since middle Beethoven and afterwards, where the pedal has been used because it was conceived of and it's been used in a lot of music, especially the romantic period, cannot be, cannot be imagined without it. If I take a series of chords, they're done. If I push the pedal down, I get this. Now I've produced a larger, more orchestral sonority by holding down the dampers. Now, if I take a simple passage, what do I got here? Well, I had an arpeggio. But it's done. There's nothing there now. I take the pedal with it. Now I had an arpeggio. What do I have now? I have a chord. And so when you arpeggiate things and you hold them by pedal, you create chords. Now there's something called uh, sympathetic vibration and overtone series. I'm not going to get into that very much except to give you one quick demonstration that this C here and this C here are related. If I keep this C down and I hit this one, you can just hear the other. Maybe I need to bring it down to this one. This is closer. There it is. You hear this guy. He's vibrating in sympathy to the other guy because of those string length vibrations. They vibrate not only in, in one length, but they vibrate in, in quarters and eighths and, and so on. And I can't explain all the technicality of this because, oh, my golly, it would take forever. Okay. So that's basic pedal 101. Now I'm going to get into a piece, and we'll talk about some pedaling issues. Okay. And this piece I've chosen is a hymn. It's What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and I'm going to have one phrase, which I'm going to use to demonstrate. Okay, the pedal is a soul of the piano, but your ear has to tell the soul what to do. <laughs> All right, so when I play this hymn, I'll just play two phrases. Here's how it sounds with no pedal at all. sound. All the notes are there. It's a little dry sounding. Okay, that's one extreme. Now I will push the pedal down before I even start the piece, and I'll hold it, hold it down through the entire uh, four phrases. Then what do we got now? I hold the pedal down. gone far enough to make my point. This is very wet. There is absolutely no clarity. It's all gotten now because not only do the notes that are the same in each octave are, are sounding, but all of these notes that are that are vibrating simultaneously and all the partials of all the notes throughout the entire piano and all their sympathetic vibrations and they're all kicking in and it makes a very muddy texture. All right, so now what am I going to do? 
I'm going to try a different way of pedaling. I'm going to take the each phrase and change the pedal with the bass note. And here's what I get when I do that, just with the bass note changing. to this, the bass note, we've got some diatonic motion descending, which is not good. Well, it's good, but it's not good to pedal through diatonic descending motion. So apparently my idea of pedaling and only, only with the bass note change isn't necessarily the optimal one, because although there were some parts that were almost tolerable, there were other parts where they just became too muddy. All right, so then I'm going to try to pedal uh, syncopatedly every every note, every note, and then we get this. <laughs> another extreme. But in this case we've got the legato. We're hearing all the melody notes. Um, we're not cluttering up the text here with a lot of extra vibration. So that is, in a nutshell, that's pedaling 101. That's basically all I had for this class. Um, just changing, oh, syncopated pedal, I forgot. So there's two kinds of pedaling. There's syncopated and rhythmic pedaling. If I pedal with the note, I get this. If I pedal after the note, I get this. Okay. Maybe it doesn't sound like much of a difference, and, but they're applied in the different cases. Syncopated pedaling and rhythmic pedal. Mostly I use syncopated pedal, which means I pedal after I play the note. So it's a delayed pedal. I go this one, push the pedal down, play this one. They're the same. I'll leave the pedal down. This one I'll change. This one, I'll, I'll just hold it through that one, and then I'll change here, and I'm syncopating it. So I'm taking each pedal after, and this one I'll change, after I've struck the next note. I'll clear there, because I want to get that, that, uh, that four chord sonority out of there. It's all right to hold here. I can even push it to there if I want it. I can do that together. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. So, but you have to use your ear. Now, some pieces are impossible. I was thinking, I was thinking, I was talking to a person online the other day, and I was thinking about the Schubert, the Schumann, symphonic variation because there's a passage in there that's impossible to play without pedal and it goes something like this. I'll play it without pedal. Now these notes are supposed to be held. So actually those are supposed to be those are supposed to be long notes and they're supposed to be held while the other notes are going on. Well obviously I could do it up here but I can't do it here. And here I can't do it at all. I can do it up top, but not on the bottom. So I'm going to have a skip there. And then this. And I forget about trying to hold either one there. So what you do is you pedal. Down. Down. Up with the note, you can put it back if you want to, to make the change, change, hold, come up there, it recently.
recently. But that's the idea. There's pieces that you just can't get by without it. A lot of them, a lot of uh, impressionistic music. So, a lot of other music. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's riddles like the famous pedals in Beethoven in the Waldstein where you have to hold the, where you have to play the C and then, I don't know where it is, maybe down here. Now here he's special. Now, I'm not going to go into that problem because that's a whole can of worms, but that's a strange pedaling, but Beethoven asked for that, so we have to figure out what did he want. So after about middle to late Beethoven, a lot of composers are thinking or conceiving their music with the knowledge that the pedal exists and using it as the soul of the piano, especially the Impressionists. And that's it. True Virtuoso has spoken. <laughs> and I've had a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Take care. Sorry it's so long. I didn't think it would be that long. Okay, bye-bye.